Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 755. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 753 to 755, click on the link directly below the video. Hey, 753, 754, and 755 are all uh, related. We're all, in all three videos, we're extracting from a data set invoices that are 30 days past due. Now in 53 we did it with filter, and in 54 we did it with formula. Here in 55 we're going to look at how to do it with advanced filter. Here's our data set. Uh, first things first though, I would like to have today's date and the date 30 days before so we get our range or our two bits of criteria uh, for extracting records. So I'm going to use the today function argument list. I just close parentheses. It'll always tell me railroad tracks or pound signs. No, no. I need to expand the column a little bit. It'll always tell me today's date. When I open it tomorrow, that'll say 1214. Since dates are serial numbers, I can simply say, hey, that date minus this. Now if I change this to 45, notice that this date will change. Notice this label here changes also. That's just a formula joining uh, that a dash and that cell. Now advanced filter. Uh, in 53 we turned on the filter and used the little drop down arrow. But in advanced filter you have to put the field names above exactly the same as the field name is in the data set. If you have an extra space here it won't work because there's no extra space there. Field names have to be exactly the same. And then the criteria is below. We have and criteria, which means both of these have to be met. We have to have, for the record to be extracted, the dates in this column have to be greater than or equal to this and less than that. Um, so there's two criteria. Both of those have to be met. So you have to repeat the field name twice and put both of your criteria. If we were doing or criteria, which we're not doing in this video, you'd have to list them below all the criteria in the same column. All right, so we're actually going to build a formula based on these dates. And then any time we change this input, it'll change these dates, and the criteria will update for advanced filter. The first one, I'm just going to say, hey, equals, and then open uh, double quotes, greater than or equal to close double quotes ampersand. And then I'm going to click on the this. What this is saying is greater than or equal to that date. And then we're going to do, and notice it's a, uh, serial number. If I were to remove all of the uh, formatting there, generally you could see that uh, it's just a serial number, number of days since December 31st, 1899. Number one is January 1st, 1900. I'm going to control Z on that. So when you join or create a formula, it doesn't look at the formatting, it looks at the number underneath. That's why it shows up like that. This one we're going to have to say in double quotes less than, ampersand, this. Now, we can do advanced filter. Um, OK, and the way advanced filter works is you simply click in one cell, just like any data analysis feature in Excel. And you go to the data ribbon, <coughs> advanced filter. In earlier versions, you have to go to the data menu, and then filter, advanced filter. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut. Now, I, I when 2007 came out, I compared the Alt keyboard shortcuts in 2007, 2010 with earlier versions. And this is one where um, the keyboard shortcut in 2007 is faster than the earlier version. I think the earlier version was Alt DFF, if I can remember it. No, that's filter. Alt DFF. I don't remember what it is anymore. But the one in this version is Alt and then an A and a Q. So since I do advanced filter a lot, I just go Alt A Q. Now I had one cell selected so it knew to get the whole range. It's a properly set up data set with field names at the top. I'm going to copy this to another location. My criteria, field names with criteria below. Since there's an and, you had to repeat the, the name twice. And then copy to. Now I'm going to make sure that I do not click a cell that's touching anything. Notice there's a blank all the way around. Now when, I, when it dumps this, the criteria is only looking through this column, but it's going to dump everything, right? Because this, this whole table here, it, the list range is the whole table. When I click OK, just like that. Now I'm going to count this equals, and now I am. In our two videos ago, we used filter, and we had to use sub to, uh, total to count. I don't want count out here. 
we want count because we're going to count numbers. But in 753, we use subtotal because we were counting the filtered area. But I'm just going to count um, <coughs> the extract area. This is called the extract area. And I'm going to go down far enough so that the maximum number holding shift, and I'm going to click there. I held shift and then clicked on the last cell. All right, you can see I get 26. Now, what if the criteria changes? Uh, very important to clear the area. Now, if you go from 26 and then your next criteria is 50 records, then it will automatically replace. But I always like to get in the habit of clearing the extract area first. Now, I'm going to click in one cell and control asterisk. No matter how big it is, that control asterisk on the number pad will highlight that current table. And now I want to clear. I, I not only want to delete content, which the delete key deletes content, but I want to delete the content and clear the formatting. Home, clear all. The keyboard shortcut that I remember from earlier versions, and I use this all the time. I love it to be able to clear everything. Alt EAA. -A. I'm going to Control Z. Alt EAF is just clear formatting. Alt EAA -A is clear all. All right, now I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to change this. 45. And now I'm going to do my keyboard shortcut, Alt-A-Q. Copy to another location. Now, why in the world did it remember? It remembered everything here, including the, the four cells right there. Before uh, I'm going to dump this, OK? Copy. It's got the list range, the criteria, and what's called the extract range. I'm going to click OK. And sure enough, and notice the count works now because I set it up to count the count numbers. Right? It's not counting that label right there. So 49. Now, why did it remember? Well, I'm going to go to the Name Manager, Formulas, Name Manager. The keyboard shortcut is Control F3. And I already have an extract because I always have the answer sheets. So if you look here, answer, answer. But this one right here and this one right here is this sheet. And it always saves an extract area and a criteria area. That's how come it knew when we ran this again what the criteria and extract range uh, was. I'm going to close there. Now I'm going to get uh, risky here. Uh, I want to create a macro and add a button so that I don't have to um, clear everything and then uh, run the the advanced filter again. OK, so you ready? Before I um, run a, a macro, you got to show the developer ribbon in 2007 and 2010. You have to go to, <coughs> excuse me, uh, options. And then in 2007, it's in the first. Um, general area, and you have to click the button for Show Developer. In 2010, you have to go to Customize Ribbon, and then you can say which ribbon. I checked this. All right, and so now we have our developer, because we're going to insert a button here in just a moment. Now, I'm going to start the macro, and there's important as, uh, fact about macros. There's a relative reference button. Now, by default, it's not turned on. That means in, if I turn on the macro, a macro follows you around in Excel and writes code for you. So when I click in this cell, it's going to, in the code, say select F9, which is what I want when I start, because I'm always going to have my data start set start in the same place. And then I need to clear it and then run the advanced filter. And uh, I pretty much am never going to have to use relative references in this particular video here. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Now, I can uh, record a macro. There's also a button down here on the status bar. Go ahead and click that. I'm going to say AF for advanced filter, uh, past invoices, or something like that. And I'm definitely going to do a uh, keyboard shortcut. How about Control Shift E? So I'm going to hold uh, the control is up. I'm going to hold Shift and E. I'm definitely going to restore it in this workbook. If you uh, wanted to do it uh, universal, you'd have to do it in the personal. This workbook. Uh, I'm going to click OK. As soon as the, you can see that it's turned on here, 
stop recording button is up there. Anything I do will be recorded. So I'm going to click there. Now I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut control asterisk. In the code, it's going to say select current region. And now I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Alt EAA. All this is the, the only thing we've done so far is select cell F9 and then highlight current region and clear all. Now I'm going to, still in absolute mode, click here. And because I'm in one cell in the data set, I can do Alt-A-Q, copy to another location, and then click OK. Now I'm going to select the first cell, still in absolute mode. And now I'm going to turn it off e either there, or I'm going to turn it off right here. All right, now I'm going to try this. I'm going to say 5. And I'm going to do the keyboard shortcut. So when I recorded the macro, I did uh, keyboard shortcut control plus shift plus E for extract. All right, and then control shift E. And just like that, I have, uh, uh, done, um, you know, extracted the, the invoices I want. Now I'm going to type uh, 60, control. Shift E. And sure enough, just like that, I was going to go ahead and add a button in the developer ribbon, but I'm not going to do that. Keyboard shortcut is just fine with me. Uh, let's take a look at the code. Alt F11. Oh, Alt F8 will show you the list of macros. Alt F8. Uh, and then you could say uh, edit, and it will jump there, right, right to the editor window and you can see inserted a module there's this workbook right there the name of the workbook here's the sheets there's the module there's the code uh, let's see uh, select cell um, F9 which is hard coded in that's an absolute cell reference that was our keyboard shortcut control asterisk select current region clear select a9 again that was absolute and then uh, we did alt aq and it uh, properly uh, did the advanced filter. And then finally, it, I got that scroll in there. I probably don't need to do that. I could probably delete that I want. But then I selected F9. That was that starting position. And then ended uh, the routine there. All right, I'm going to close this. If you want to get directly there, Alt F11 opens it. Uh, all right, um, that's a little fun. 7.53 was extracting invoices uh, with filter, 54 was formula, and uh, 55 was advanced filter and macro. All right, see you next video.